A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. The people of Kazakhstan, the battle for Berlin, in the lair of the enemy. The Reichstag is almost invisible. This is how the wars end, while the memory is alive. Almaty, a concert dedicated to Great Victory Day. People solemnly bring in the hall, a capsule, with soil from the Moscow region. There, where in distant 1941, the Panfil of warriors fought bloody battles. And a copy of the banner that Bakim Jan Koshkarbaev hosted above the Reichstag. It's handed to the grandson of the hero. Moscow and Berlin, October 29th, 1941. Commander Rokossovsky of the 16th Army wrote on the map the frontline correspondent. While fighting near Moscow, one must think of Berlin. Soviet troops will definitely be in Berlin. The Kazakhs showed unprecedented heroism and courage on all fronts of World War II. Kenjabai Madianov participated, for example, in the capture of the Berlin Town Hall. Marshal Zhukov wrote about this. Sagadat Nomagabambetov, a hero of the Soviet Union, also participated in the capture of the Berlin Town Hall. In Battle of Berlin, Batyrs of the Great Patriotic War, Kazakhstanis. The contract was signed and she died. It was a victory which takes special place in the history of Kazakhstan. The Kostanai Rifle Brigade went on a path of combat liberating the whole of Western Europe as it reached Berlin. Chapter 1 In the Lair of the Enemy Not only divisions and armies go to Berlin. The bodies of all innocent victims are coming from the mass graves, from trenches and ditches. The fields of Majdanek and the trees of Vitebsk, on which the Germans hang their unfortunate victims, and the boots of those killed in gas chambers and shot men, women and children, all of them go to Berlin. Ilya Ehrenberg. From Kostanai to Berlin, there are 3,700 kilometers. If you go by foot, in a straight line and along a good road, it'll take a month or two. They walked, but not in a straight line, and their roads were not simple. Kostanai, the museum of local history. 73,000 people went to war from our region. About 37,000 never returned. Starting from December the 12th, 1941, the 151st Separate Rifle Brigade was being formed. Later, on its basis, the 150th appeared. And here in Kostanai, the soldiers were given a banner with a word that they were supposed to set up over Berlin. Nobody knew then that the farewell message would be fulfilled. On the banner of the victory that fluttered over the Reichstag, it was written, 150 Idritskaya, the rifle division of the Kutuzov Order of the Second Degree, they were the first who hoisted the banner over the Reichstag. The 150th Division was formed in our city of Kostanai. The attack on the lair of the enemy, that's how people called Berlin, began on April the 16th at the Silo Heights, one of the most powerful fortified areas on the way to the capital of the Third Reich. Hitler had high hopes. For courage, it was me and the commander on the Silo Heights that killed two tanks. The heights were taken on April the 18th and then Berlin. The Berlin Post of the Nazis, about 300,000 people, 3,000 guns and 250 tanks. They defended the city fiercely, a mass of tricks, a complex system of fortifications, air raids, snipers, literally from every window. They fought for every house, alley and bridge. The river Spree flows through Berlin. And before fighting, we went to take pictures, told Nadezhda. My friend Shorochka stayed in the tent. She washed the bandages. We had had an air raid. I looked at her and she looked at me and she didn't say anything back to me. She was probably in shock. 
She had lost both her legs. Only a small patch was left from that tent. We wrapped her into what was left and sent her to the nearest hospital. After that, I never heard anything about her again. The River Spree, the last water barrier, on April 29th, only a few dozen meters left until the Reichstag itself. Chapter 2. The Reichstag is almost invisible. When dawn came, everyone approached the windows hoping to see the Reichstag, but they didn't see anything. Some building was in the way. The cadet asked why they did not come. The grey building was in our way. Yes, it was. It was the Reichstag. And it never occurred to him that this house in front of the windows was the same building. Vasily Subotin, how will the wars end? Berlin, the square in front of the Reichstag building. A peaceful picture, a green lawn, and tourists. The first stone in the building of the German parliament was laid by the Kaiser Wilhelm in 1884, and construction took 10 years. And then the famous story. World War I, the Kaiser suffered a crushing defeat. In 1933, the Weimar Republic fell, and Hitler came to power. But in the political life of Nazi Germany, the Reichstag did not play a special role, since in 1941, it only served at the base of the Air Force, which was led by Hermann Goering. However, for the Soviet soldiers, the Reichstag was a symbol of Nazi Germany. Soldiers had been dreaming about reaching Berlin for a long time, only a few finally made it. Uskamenegor's resident, Nikolai Molostov, is one of them. He sorts out his medals and reflects on the past. Many of the boys who served with me died. Well, God saved me. He says that his biography is ordinary. He fought at the front and was wounded, and then he ended up at an artillery unit as an intelligence officer. I got this medal for Berlin. These were terrible battles for the Reichstag. There were so many fires in the city that the night had turned into day. The area in front of the Reichstag was surrounded with trenches. The terrain was perfectly shot through, carefully prepared for defense. The Reichstag itself, a real fortress, with walls a meter and a half in height, with brick windows, and only the trunks of machine guns visible. The first banner on the building appeared on April the 30th. Yeah. I took out the flag and wrote our names in a corner with a chemical pencil. Grigory Bulatov, Koshkarbaev, 674 Regiment. Bolatov says, you did the right thing, comrade lieutenant. What if they kill us and no one will know who we were and where we were here? The shells tore the stones of the square. Bullets drew a cobblestone. At home, houses burned. Little Bulatov, a little frightened, still a young boy. His uniform was big for him and was a little long. The headgear was also bigger. He was circling somewhere under the armpit of Koshkabayev. What do we do? asked Bulatov, trustingly looking into his eyes. Vasily Subotin, how the wars end. Then I said to Grisha, Grisha, we're not going to die, we're going to carry out the assignment and put up the red flag. The flag was hoisted, but we fought for the building for another two days. In the basement, one and a half thousand Nazis throwing grenades at our soldiers. And when they finally realized they won't be able to win the building back, they set it on fire. On May the 1st, it was announced to the whole world that the Reichstag was taken. In London, Paris, and New York, prayer services were held on this occasion, and Soviet soldiers fought in a burning building. They stood firm, and the banner of victory, the one that Bolatov and Koshkabayev hoisted, was not a light. And in this fight, our countryman Ilya Siyanov really demonstrated his character. He was an accountant in the village of Semyozernoy, in the Kostanai region. On the day of the assault, Ilya Siyanov had to take command of the regiment. In total, the fighting for the Reichstag lasted only four days. Then the Nazi command asked the parliamentarians to negotiate for surrender. They asked to send the general, but they sent Sergeant Siyanov. Negotiations took place in the metro station. They asked, will they shoot? I said about our conditions, and from ourselves, if they honestly capitulated, everyone will be given the opportunity to return home. Someone asked, is Stalin also here? I said importantly, 
Yes, Comrade Stalin is here. It made a great impression on them from the memoirs of Ilyas Yano. Incidentally, it was Sianov stormtroopers who provided the fire support to Meliton Kantaria and Melikan Yegorov. They were accompanied by Alexei Berest, who was undeservedly forgotten. For a long time, it was believed that they were the first to establish the banner of victory over the Reichstag. But it happened a few hours after the banner was installed by Koshkarbaev and Bulatov. Chapter 3. This is how the wars end. The victorious issue of Socialist Kazakhstan on the May 9th with the cover of Stalin's photo and the message that Germany had capitulated. This battle is included in the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest in history. Almost 2 million guns were shot, 36,000 tons of deadly metal fell on the city. The fighting continued unabated for 10 days and nights. As soon as Berlin fell on May the 2nd, everyone just slept. We were asleep, everyone was. Soldiers and commanders, right there near the Reichstag. We slept in the pack, right in the square, head to head, without waking up for two days. Vasily Subot, how the wars end. Berlin, 1945, 75% of buildings were destroyed with piles of garbage and smells of burning, blooming lilacs and the autographs of victory. On the walls of the Reichstag, there is an inscription. We are the Panfil of Guardsmen. Thank you, Dad, for Valenki. Batya, so the soldiers called General Panfilo, who did not reach Berlin, died in the battles near Moscow. Why were they grateful for Valenki? Because being a caring commander, Panfilo did everything to ensure that people in Moscow, even under severe frost, were dressed and fed properly. When we approached the Reichstag, we began to sing who we were. All these columns were broken, covered in dust and dirt. Nadezhda went to the front as a volunteer in 1941, just after school, a 16-year-old girl. Infantry, frontline speciality, cook and nurse, wounded in the battles for Berlin. There were three of us, Clara Pacelli, Tonya Bagrantsev, and I. We found an apartment and stayed there for one night. Then they went for a walk around Berlin. A sniper of the SS shot at Clara from around the corner and she died in our hands after the victory. The danger was also in the fact that many of those victorious days were in a state of euphoria. It was necessary to save the soldiers who were shooting everywhere, shouting, victory, victory, victory. After the victory under the treaty with the Allies, the Reichstag was taken under the occupation zone of Great Britain. Allies appeared on the streets of Berlin. There were French soldiers and Englishmen. Everyone said something. They sold wine and old uniforms. At worst, chewing gum. The Germans carried clothes, jewelry, and cameras. In exchange, they took money, and most of all, bread, canned food, tobacco, stewed meat. For the first time, we so closely saw our allies. They came here because of the Elbe. And the same night, we left. Vasily Subotin, how the wars end. We met with the English on the Elbe. I also remember the soldiers said, that's a fair. We won, and they came to take our trophies. Epilogue, while the memory is alive. It was recently calculated that if all the dead Soviet people had participated in the parade, it would have lasted 57 days and nights. According to statistics, the losses of only Kazakhstan during the World War II are almost equal to the military losses of both the two allied armies of the United States and Great Britain together. The name of each person, everyone who made this victory at the front, everyone who made this victory back at home, and every sacrifice that was made on the way to this victory is important. 